Hello everyone. Welcome to the Sunday Ride with the Ride with Lance. Hope you're all having a great weekend. And there's a few things I want to talk about today on this ride. One is going to be about a, a fall I took two weeks ago on a bike ride. And some things I thought about for rider safety when you're riding alone after that fall that I took. And the other topic is accessories. Questions, I've gotten a lot of questions about one particular accessory on my bike. And I will stop a little later on, show you what that accessory is and what I use it for. But for now, let's enjoy some of this ride. Coming through the park here. I'll slow it down. That's what I was talking about. I don't need these geese to start uh, chasing me down and honking. But they are everywhere, aren't they? Yeah, I'm going to take it slow through this park. I'm trying to be that responsible rider. People are having a good day today. Having some good times. Looks like a lot of birthday parties going on today. Mmm, smell that barbecue. So let's talk about that one accessory I keep getting questions about in the comments. People are going, what is that on your handlebar? Well, I'll tell you what, it's this right here. Yeah, it's my extra handlebar, so I can ride that like this. No, just kidding. This is an accessory bar. You see how the, the handlebar here, it's curved? You know, and it, not all, all bikes are the same. Some have a bigger curve, some have a lesser curve. But with all the stuff that already comes with the bike, you know, you have the throttle, you have the shifter, you have the bell, you have the PAS controller, you have the display. It takes up a lot of real estate right here. So if you're wanting to put a something like a, a phone mount, there's some bikes where this, this angle is just too much. It can't clamp. Or if you want to put uh, another mount for a GPS or a camera, that's what you'd use this for. Now, I'll pull over and I'll show you examples so you can get a better visual of what this looks like with accessories on it. So this is what it looks like when I use that mount. See, I got the, the phone mount here I've got a GoPro mount here, and this mount I use for the 360 cam. And let me show you what it looks like when I'm actually riding. So this is the, the view you would get from the camera when it's mounted to my chest. And it's one of the reasons why I don't use all this stuff when I'm making a video. That's because I want you to see more of what's going on in front of me without being blocked by all this stuff. Now let me show you what it looks like when I use the GoPro mount right here. This is what the, 
the GoPro view looks like when the camera's mounted on the accessory bar facing me. This is one view I don't use. I don't think I've ever used it in my videos because I'm pretty certain that you all want to see what's going on in front of the bike instead of me. So let me turn the camera around and you can see what it looks like when I have the camera, the GoPro mounted on the accessory bar and just facing forward. Now this is the view when it is just mounted on the accessory bar looking forward. That, that kind of that classic POV, POV view. being mounted on my chest so you can see over my handlebars here you can't see any part of the bike and the camera turns wherever I turn the steering wheel it doesn't stay straight so I prefer mounting it to the chest so you can see the handlebars my hands, what's going on in front of me, which way the bike's going. So let me uh, mount that back to my chest and get back to the video. All right, we are back to the classic view I like the best. Camera mounted here, looking forward, letting you, use, you all see this. All right, so now we've talked about this accessory. Let's talk about the fall. The fall I took, it was uh, two weeks ago now. Yes, I fell, it was rider error. I didn't crash the bike. I fell off the bike doing something I know the bike couldn't do. So uh, That's why I say it's rider error. I don't even know why I attempted to do it, but I'll tell you what happened. So this is where it happened. This is where I took the fall. And I'm going to tell you, it was 100% rider error. Let me explain. So I had just finished the initial ride on the Zebra. And I had literally just stopped recording and wanted to do a little off-road riding in this area you see around here. See, just a little dirt area. When I decided... I'll show you what I decided to do. So this is what I did. You see where the bike is parked right here? You see this little embankment right here? You see the kind of the, the steepness and the height of that embankment? Well, for some reason, I got on the bike from a dead stop and decided I'm just gonna try and go right up it. Well, that didn't work. I'll show you what happened. So I got the bike to right about here. Stop. Stop. And sitting on the seat, I couldn't reach the ground on either side. So what did I do? I, I grabbed both brakes, but in doing so, I went forward, then my feet slipped back like this, and I start going backwards, and the bike just went up, and right about here, I let go. I let go of the bike. The bike went over to the side, and I tumbled backwards and went straight down and hit my head. I mean, I went down like a board. And uh, hit, hit the, the back of my head pretty hard. And I could feel basically my brain in the front move back a little, I hit so hard. It didn't knock me out. It didn't make me dizzy. It didn't make me, you know, groggy at all. Like you might get, like if you get a concussion, but I am pretty sure that I, I, I got a, I suffered a minor concussion because the the days after that I could not look at fine print on a computer or anything that moved like on a TV screen it would start making me feel sick whenever I looked up it would make me dizzy and make me feel sick it took a few days to get over that but I'm okay now but that just leaves me to some some safety concerns and stuff things some things i started to think about about rider safety when you're out riding alone and i'll tell you what i'm thinking and now that brings me to things i thought about for rider safety for the person not the bike 
I'm not talking about making sure you have the right tools, a spare inner tube, any kind of stuff. I'm talking about safety for the rider. Now, what I was thinking, or some of the things that came to my mind, first of all, is if you're riding by yourself, let your significant other know where you're going and how long you expect to be out. On top of that, something I already do now is I carry an air tag on my keys, which is in my bag right here. So my wife or my daughter can look up my location anytime they want to. And if they haven't heard from me for a while, I'm not answering the phone. They see no movement on the air tag. Then they can come look for me or, you know, heaven forbid, call the fire department, call an ambulance, call the police to see what's going on. Which brings me to the other thing I was thinking about. A lot of people carry or mount their phones up here or they put it in the bag like I have it right now. Now this thought comes back from, from my hiking days. Is what if you get separated from your bike? Your phone is mounted to your bike Say you're riding along on top of a, a hill where it drops off the side. And for some reason or another, you fall off, you tumble down the hill. Your bike stays up there. You're separated from your means of communication. You know, for me, it'd be my phone is in the bag, my keys are in the bag. So, depending on how far you fall, and if you're incapacitated, you've, you've really hurt yourself, you know, you've broken a leg or you've twisted an ankle, and you're, or you're just in a position where you just can't get back. So, I think going forward for me, and this might be something for you all to think about, is at least if you're not going to use your phone as a GPS put it in your pocket and maybe get a, a pair of riding shorts or pants or something that has a pocket on the side that zips shut so that phone can't just accidentally slip out now at least you'll have the phone with you if you take a tumble like that where you can't move, you're trapped, you're incapacitated, you're away from your bike. And hopefully you have cell service. Or at least what or at least enough service to make a 911 call and pinpoint your location. Now, going further than that, I believe what I'm going to do is I'm going to get another air tag that is attached to my body somehow. Oh, excuse me. maybe on a belt loop on the belt in a pocket that has a zipper so this way if you do take a tumble and you knock yourself out or you're just disorientated and, and you're not capable of making a phone call or anything at least that air tag will be with you and it can be tracked So those were a couple things I thought about it about for personal rider safety when you're out alone. Now I'd like to hear your thoughts of what you would do or what you are doing already. Because I'm sure everybody's got some good ideas. So uh, if you have them, put them in the comments below. I would like to read them and I'm sure a lot of other people would be interested who may be a little nervous, maybe you're, maybe 
they're a bit older, but they still want to ride by themselves, but they worry about these things. So go ahead and put your suggestions in the comments below. And I think that's going to bring this Sunday ride to a close. So I appreciate you all coming if you've made it this far. It's been another great sunny clear Sunday and I hope you have a great upcoming week and I will see you on the next video. Bye.